Tantivasar uh, Tantivasadakarn. Sorry about that, Nat. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, you can share your screen whenever you're ready. Hi, do people see my screen? Yes, and we can hear you. So go right ahead. Okay, uh, so thank you for the organizers for putting together this workshop. And today I'm going to be continuing on the discussion on hybrid fracton orders. Um, which Sargar just mentioned. And I, I will be focusing on uh, generalizations to uh, uh, non-abelian groups. And this is um, in some work that is gonna hopefully appear soon. Um, so let me start by sort of uh, stating some facts about which is probably well known in the community is that um, we know that fractons uh, can be obtained by gauging some subsystem symmetry. And that is because um, for each uh, subsystem symmetry, we have a conservation law, which tells us that charges have to be conserved on this, this plane. And suppose we have, for example, like in the X cube model, three, um, three intersecting planes, then any charge that is, uh, that, and any excitation that is charged under all of these planar symmetries, they have to obey the conservation law of all of them. And so it is, it is not able to move because it cannot move out of any of these planes. So this is assuming that each plane is an abelian symmetry. And so a natural question to ask is whether we can obtain uh, non-abelian fractons by um, gauging a non-abelian subsystem symmetry. And however, we run into a problem because of the following. Suppose I have um, two subsystems, uh, uh, three intersecting subsystem symmetries. And let me say it is a group element G and H. Um, suppose I Suppose G and H don't commute and they consider the commutator of, for example, the red one and the blue one, then since G and H don't commute, their group commutator is actually a line symmetry that acts only on this black line and lives in the uh, commutator subgroup. And if I repeat the argument with the third plane, um, what results is that um, I actually have a low, instead of having a planar symmetry, I in, in fact have more symmetry. They have a a local symmetry at each point given by the abelianization, sorry, given by the uh, commutation, commutator subgroup. So actually the, the only uh, planar symmetry that I can gauge is actually smaller. It's not a non-abelian group, it's only an abelian subgroup. So even if I uh, gauge such a symmetry, um, I would only get um, an abelian fracton order. So then there's a question of how then can we get non-abelian fractons? And in the literature, um, there have been multiple works that have uh, attempted this, and I'm going to uh, roughly categorize them into three different uh, ways. One is to strongly couple 2D and 3D topological phases, um, some of which can have non-abelian particles, in the, and you couple them such that the resulting uh, 3D phase has fracton excitations, which are non-abelian. And the second one is to uh, gauge an abelian subsystem symmetry, but not in a, a trivial product state, but possibly an SPT or a topological order. And that in some special cases can give rise to non-abelian fractons. And the third one is to gauge, uh, that has been re uh, introduced recently is to gauge a permutation symmetry um, in fracton orders. For example, you can have uh, two X cube models and you can gauge uh, the symmetry that uh, permutes the two, or you can have, for example, an XQ model, a single XQ model ZN, and you gauge the charge conjugation symmetry. Um, but there is sort of an opening question of, uh, can we, can we uh, obtain non-abelian fracton for, for example, any given group G? And that's what we try to address in this work. And a summary is that, in fact, we can construct a non-abelian fracton a model with non-abelian fractons for any finite group G that contains a, an abelian normal subgroup N. And in some sense, this commuting projector Hamiltonian we construct can sort of be thought of like as quote unquote, a quantum double model for these hybrid fracton orders. So they contain both uh, mobile and immobile excitations, but importantly um, for a non-abelian group G, they contain non-abelian fract fractons that uh, transform under uh, any finite group G that satisfied this condition. 
Okay, so in order to uh, make a connection to previous work, actually, uh, the work can be our work can be sort of uh, mostly connected to this last one, where they gauge a permutation symmetry. And so, to to view this connection, uh, in in these works, they consider an, a fracton model, which is enriched by some permutation symmetry. Uh, let me call it Q. And by gauging this global symmetry Q, they obtain abel uh, models with non-abelian fractons. And in order to step back a bit, uh, uh, let me remind that in two-dimensional topological phases, we have a quite nice picture is that um, starting from a, uh, a product state with symmetry G, what one can do is if one has a normal subgroup N, we can first gauge this N global symmetry to get a symmetry enriched topological phase. And with uh, and the remaining global symmetry is the quotient group Q, which is G mod N. And this symmetry can either um, permute or fractionalize and other symmetry enrichment on this uh, topological order. But after gauging the quotient group Q, we can then obtain um, a G topological order, which is realized on the lattice as the G quantum double model. So actually it turns out that a similar story works in the fracton case as well, because we realize that fracton orders are just the result of gauging an abelian uh, subsystem symmetry N. So if we work our step back, the natural thing to gauge is turns out to be a G paramagnet with the following symmetry. We want a G global symmetry along with an a N subsystem symmetry. So a, a subsystem symmetry of a normal subgroup N. Then after we gauge the N subsystem symmetry, actually we can find a semi symmetry enriched fracton model. But in addition to just permutation, we can also have, for example, fractionalization and, and other symmetry enrichment as well. And after gauging this uh, quotient group Q, we will uh, uh, realize a hybrid fracton order, which we will uh, denote with uh, uh, these uh, groups G and N. So let me outline the construction for a general group. So the input data for this hybrid fracton model is a finite group G and any abelian normal subgroup N. And also we want to specify what type of subsystem symmetry N is, for example, it can be planar, it can be fractal. And the, the symmetry protecting this is a G global symmetry and an N subsystem symmetry. And let me emphasize that G and N are actually not independent. Uh, for example, if I have planar symmetries, if I take the N subsystem symmetry and a product over all the planes in, for example, one foliation, then I get a global symmetry N which is in fact a normal subgroup of the G global symmetry. So these G and N are, 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 are sort of intertwined. And for a shorthand, let me call this the G comma N symmetry. And uh, the statement is that the hybrid fracton order that we construct can be realized just by gauging this symmetry. And we do that explicitly in a lattice model. And we obtain a, a model quite similar to the quantum double model, and it generalizes both the 3D quantum double model and uh, fracton models. So the Hamiltonian is a commuting projector consisting of uh, vertex terms, which is a projector that enforces a zero charge state. And uh, uh, projectors of zero flux uh, on each cube and each plaquette, for example. And importantly, um, these reduce uh, to the quantum in, in the case of the normal subgroup is trivial, meaning you don't have subsystem symmetry, then this will just reduce to the quantum double. And also if the normal subgroup and the global symmetry are the same, that is the quotient group is trivial, then it reduces to your favorite fracton model with uh, gauge group N, which is your uh, abelian, uh, abelian subgroup. And Importantly, in this model, we find that the charge excitations are violations of this vertex operator. And like the quantum double model, they obtain, uh, they obey the group law um, of the group G, which means that uh, excitations of the, this model transform as irreducible representations of G. But uh, different choices of the normal subgroup N can realize um, different hybrid models. And the choice of N, in fact, uh, determines the mobility condition. So for each, uh, 
for each uh, group element n in the normal subgroup big N, we have uh, a conservation law for these charges. So for each normal subgroup n, you can actually obtain a different um, hybrid fracton model. So to give a concrete example, let me focus on uh, the group G, which the, the dihedral group of eight elements, which are the symmetries of the square. And um, the symmetry, the normal subgroups of this group, um, the smallest one, the smallest non-trivial one is the center, which is just inversion of the square. And then there are also two other non-trivial groups. One is uh, the subgroup of rotations, and the other one is the subgroup of uh, reflecting over two axes. And so what happens is if you choose different normal subgroups, then actually if you first gauge the planar n symmetry, for example, if you choose n equals z2 square and you gauge the planar symmetry, you will get uh, two copies of an xq. And now the remaining global symmetry, uh, d4 mod n, is a z2 group which acts as the swap symmetry. And in fact, that's the non-abelian fracton um, that uh, these uh, papers consider. But you can also choose other, uh, other normal subgroups. And after gauging, you will get uh, different models as well. For example, we find that if we choose n equals z2, we, have, we obtain uh, sort of the model considered in this defect construction paper, which has different uh, mobilities of excitations. And we can also choose n equals z4, and we obtain a, a new uh, hybrid fracton model that hasn't been constructed. And importantly, all of these models have a non-abelian D4 fracton, but it turns out that um, the other excitations have different mobilities. And this is in contrast to gauging uh, different normal subgroups in 2D, where regardless of what you gauge, uh, you will always end up with the D4 quantum double in the end. So now let me uh, comment on the different excitations. So as I said, the non-abelian fracton in this model, as long as you choose a, uh, uh, a non-trivial normal subgroup, you always get a fracton. Otherwise, all the charges are, are mobile, and this is just a 3D quantum double model. And um, the, the other excitations here, which are uh, char abelian charge excitations, of, uh, which are irreps of D4, depending on the normal subgroup you choose, you can have different mobilities. For example, if I choose this normal subgroup to be Z2, all this, these abelian charges are mobile. Whereas for different choices here, you get uh, different uh, fracton excitations. And similarly, like the abelian model that Sagar presented, the hybrid XQ model, you also have loop excitations and line on excitations labeled by conjugacy classes. And depending on the choice of normal subgroup you choose, you obtain different uh, mobilities of the excitations. Now, it seems that uh, one might have to work out case by case to obtain this table, but actually one can argue formally and uh, we obtain the following claim for excitations for a general group. Um, so the claim is that uh, given any charge, which is an irreducible representation of G, it turns out that uh, for the choice, for a given choice of normal subgroup N, we can consider this uh, group extension. And an the claim is that an irrep of G will be mobile as long as it can be pulled back from a non-trivial irrep of Q. And likewise, if it cannot be pulled back uh, to a non-trivial irrep of Q, uh, it'll be a fractonic excitation. So depending on the, the fracton model you choose to sort of hybridize with like X cube or Haas code, to do, for example, in X cube, this will be a fracton. Likewise, if you the flux excitation will be a mobile loop, if and only if the conjugacy class is non-trivial when I push forward or I project to Q. Um, and otherwise, uh, this uh, conjugacy this conjugacy class will be fractonic. For example, in X cube, this will be the line on. Nat, you so the support of to yes, uh, thank you. So sort of to conclude, we have a sort of quantum double model for hybrid fracton orders. And this gives us a very general construction to construct uh, many um, uh, fract uh, hybrid fracton models, both abelian and non-abelian. And this is just an example list. And you can obtain different uh, non-abelian models with, uh, with non-abelian fractons, but different mobile charges. And these reference here are those that have appeared in the literature, but 
uh, the other ones here highlighted are have have not been constructed yet. And for each case, you can also have different uh, choose different fracton orders to hybridize with, and you can get uh, different models as well. So this is just a, a quick summary of, um, of of our result, and let me uh, end with just a slide of open questions. All right, thank you very much, Nat. Uh,